This video is powered by private internet access. With apps for Windows, Mac, Linux, and even Google Chrome, they've got your VPN needs covered. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and we cover a lot of actual budget SSDs and really just a lot of SSDs here on the channel. But one thing that I've actually never really seen anyone do and nor I've actually done myself is update the firmware on our SSDs. Sure, there's probably some people out there who religiously update their firmware every single whenever a new firmware comes out, but let's face it, most of us don't even think about updating our firmware. So today we're going to explain some benefits of updating our firmware Firmware, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and show you how to update the firmware on your SSD. Now this process should work for just about any drive out there that has uh, a firmware update available for it, so I guess we can go ahead and do that. Now if your drive is sort of from the cheaper side of the internet and there's no real official web page for it, you may be out of luck in actually getting a firmware update, but if you do have a drive like a Samsung, a Crucial, a Kingston, a SanDisk, or any of your really well-known made manufactured drives, uh, there should be a firmware update available for it. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the whole world of updating the firmware on our SSDs. But first off, why do we even need to update our firmware on our SSD? I mean, the drive works fine, why should I even bother about actually updating it? Well, SSDs are actually very complex, and sure, on the channel, whenever we do an SSD review, we generally break them down to some flash chips and some DRAM packages, if you're lucky, and also to a controller, all mounted to a PCB, and then obviously it stores your storage, and yes, that is true from a very sort of a far back look at it. However, when you really start to look closely at an SSD, it looks more like a computer, rather than a storage device. It has I.O. interfaces, CPU cores on board, memory for those CPU cores, obviously storage for our data, encryption algorithms. There is so much going on with an SSD that really not many of us actually think about. And in fact, they're closer to an actual whole computer system in a little tiny form factor than just a blank storage drive. So there's a lot of things going on with it. And in fact, on top of all of these little bits and pieces that SSDs do, they have their own operating system on it. So operating systems do need updates to go ahead and be run efficiently into the future. And as this is sort of a very close to a computer system, yes, it's not actually a computer, but as it is very close to a computer system with a ton of complexity, there's inevitably gonna be bugs in some of that software thanks to the high level of complexity in these drives. Now, these bugs are usually not really that big and they're not going to mean the loss of your data and generally, nine times out of ten, you're going to be fine just running the original release of firmware there, but there's always those small bugs that can be fixed and you can overall get a better experience simply by updating the firmware on your system and that's really what we're going to be coming at here today. Whether you get better read and write performance or it's things like increasing trim performance or helping with wear leveling, that may not help you initially but definitely maybe three, four, five years down the track could definitely be invaluable to going ahead and having the correct pieces of software on this guy. And heck, even in some more serious cases, uh, there has been times when security patches have been fixed just simply through updating the firmware. But most of the time, uh, companies release firmware if there's a reason to release firmware. It's not like a Windows update where sure, you probably should do it, but you could probably get away with it. Uh, generally speaking, SSD firmware is pretty important to go ahead and do on your system. But if you like me, you've never done it before and this might be the first time of actually doing it. So today, we're going to be going ahead and taking a look at updating the firmware. That's sort of why you probably should do it. Again, it's a lot more complex and if you do want to learn more about SSDs, I do recommend you read into it because man, they're absolutely mind-blowing pieces of kit and how much like complexity and detail go into those things and honestly, I could talk about it for hours and hours and hours. But let's face it, it'd be a really boring video if I just sat here talking about SSDs and construction and architecture and that kind of stuff. Not that cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the actual updating process. Now, how do I update firmware, you may be wondering? Well, actually, in today's market, it is super, super easy. Rewind maybe three or four years ago, it was a lot more complex having to make like bootable things and yeah, it wasn't so good. These days, a lot, if not all the top manufacturers actually offer simple toolbox or software packages that just do all the work for you. There's very little work you need to do. So again, today, we're going to be going ahead and jumping into some software packages and showing you how to update your software or rather the firmware 
on the drive. Now we'll be using Samsung drives and also two crucial drives. This, those are two very popular SSD standards here. Samsung drives extremely popular. Every second person I know has a Samsung drive and also two crucial drives are also two extremely popular in their MX500 form factor but also too not everybody knows about this is a lot of OEM systems come out with crucial or Samsung drives. So if you have a laptop or pre-built desktop there's a very very high chance that you either have a Samsung drive or a crucial drive. So that's why we're covering them today because they are the most popular SSDs. Don't get me wrong if you have say an Intel drive, a Kingston drive, a SanDisk drive, all those other drives have their own versions and pieces of software and the process is basically identical to what we're doing here today. However you just need to go ahead and download the correct pieces of software which I'll try and leave as much linked in the description box. I'll do my best right there. Now these pieces of software not only allow us to update the drives but also to tell us information about the actual drives like fill rate, uh, writes written to the actual thing, the condition of the drives, the temperatures and so much more and in fact even some pieces of software like the Samsung Disk Magician can increase performance by doing things like Samsung Rapid Mode that takes about a gigabyte or so, sometimes two gigs, I don't exactly know the full number but around a gigabyte worth of system RAM and uses it as a cache for even faster performance on Samsung SSDs and it also too helps cut down on writes and overall is a much better thing. So if you have a Samsung drive, maybe toggle on that little uh, boosting mode because that is not too bad there. And this is the same thing over on the Crucial side looking at their software package, it is full featured, there's a lot of different things you can do in it and whilst it is a topic for another video, there's a lot of things you can do in this piece as a software. So kicking off with our firmware updates, before we want to go ahead and do that, make sure you do a full backup of the data on the drive. If you're updating your C drive, make sure you do either a clone or a full backup in case this all goes wrong, your drive gets bricked or something like that. Whilst the process today is extremely safe, there is always that small chance and when it comes to data you don't want to be taking any chances. So for today I copied all my data over to an external drive and then backed up that drive with Backblaze which you can find linked down in that description box. Overall please back up your data. I'm not responsible for losing data and it absolutely sucks when data is lost. Again, this process is extremely safe but there's always that slight chance. But anyway, once we've gone ahead and copied over our data, so we've gone ahead and created ourselves a backup, we'll kick off the operations with a Samsung firmware update. We'll open up Samsung Disk Magician and as we can see right here, we have an old 840 Evo drive, which I can tell is kind of on the original piece of firmware because it is very, very outdated. So we can go ahead and simply hit the update button and follow the on-screen prompts and the update will download the bits and pieces it needs and it will go ahead and get the SSD ready for its update. Now Samsung drives do need to go ahead and have a reboot so once it's gone ahead and done we'll just reboot the actual system and then we can go ahead and let the system actually install the new firmware. Some SSDs will allow for on-the-fly firmware updating but it seems to be that most if not all Samsung drives do require a restart. Now do note when you restart your drive or restart the computer the drive will take a moment to initialize or a little bit longer than normal and your computer will sit on the splash screen or a blank screen for a little bit longer than it may usually do. Uh, it's just because it's updating that firmware there's nothing really to be worried about. It can take anywhere from one minute to three minutes maybe even longer it just depends on what drive you do have. So do give it a moment if you're a little bit worried that oh my god it's now suddenly a black screen I've lost anything. Uh, I wouldn't be too worried for now because there is still that chance it's just simply doing an update. It just needs some time to go ahead and process. So Give your SSD a moment, boom, it's going to be back into the operating system in no time and we can see right here that now the drive is up to date. And that's about as simple as it comes with Samsung drives, you just let it go and do its update and restart and that's basically it. Switching gears a little bit, we do have the Seagate drive or rather the Crucial drive, don't know why I said Seagate there, but anyway, we do have the Crucial drive process which is almost identical, however it's ever so slightly different. Now as we did mention, you can do on the fly updates with some SSDs and that is where Crucial separates themselves. Just like the Samsung drive, we're going to navigate over to our firmware section and obviously start to do the updates. Now my drives are up to date, but jumping over to this system right here, we see we do need to do an update. And as we can see, we get a message saying that, well, it can go ahead and do on the fly updates. So we went to go ahead and actually check the little box that says live firmware updates. And again, this just means you don't need to restart the system. Basically, we'll hit go. It'll install the updates, but we don't need to restart. This is really great if you've got something that 
you just need to keep doing in the background are really, really great. However, I do recommend one uh, when you're doing a firmware update, don't actually write to the drive. If it's your C drive, have everything closed off in the background. If it's like a scratch drive or an extra drive in your system, don't access it while you're doing the update. Whilst it's not really going to hurt anything, it's just one of those things you probably don't want to go ahead and do. Once we've gone ahead and hit the green big update button, give it a moment or two and boom, the drive is now updated. Now all firmware updates do have a change log in this guy and for example this guy right here for our MX500 is getting a number of improvements to our SSD which might not seem like much uh, at the moment but definitely in the future can be helped. For example improved trim and also to wear leveling can drastically change how long an SSD will last over time as if the wear leveling is not that great, the trim commands aren't that great initially, it's not going to last as long if you had some really good initial trim and also to wear leveling. So it's really important to do these type of updates as obviously other change logs for different SSDs so always important to take a look at what they're actually changing on your drive but all in all we've gone ahead and done ourselves the update. Now as I mentioned the process is going to be just about the same for any other drive out there that does support some sort of software package or disk tool like this. First off download the toolbox that you're going to be using again whichever brand will have their own version. Number two check for updates if there's no updates and don't worry. Number three then apply the necessary updates and four restart as required and you're basically done. Obviously I guess the first thing before number zero should really be update or rather back up your data but all in all it's really a four step process and sometimes in a lot of cases it's actually a three step process takes all of about five to ten minutes depending on your internet speed and gets you much better drive reliability in most cases. Now there's also to the chance that your drive may not have a toolbox and a lot of the time manufacturers will just provide an ISO or some sort of disk image that you can burn to a bootable USB, boot off that drive and do the update manually. Unfortunately it doesn't have a nice GUI in a lot of cases but just about any firmware out there can be applied to an SSD provided it is obviously designed for that SSD but also to provided you're willing to put the time in. Again if you pick up a Samsung and Crucial Drive the software package is super easy and I'll leave them linked uh, down in that description box if you do have one of those drives but again Crucial, Kingston, Seagate, WD all those guys have their own software packages and it is unbelievably easy to do this little process and really can help you in the long run. But if you want to pick up a Samsung drive or a Crucial drive or the software packages we talked about today, I'll leave them linked down in the description box. Uh, I'll also to try and leave some other brands toolboxes. I'll try and leave Intel's one down there. I'll try and leave Kingston's and Sandisk's. However, uh, do make sure you download the correct ones for your drivers. In some cases, uh, there are different versions of the software for different SSDs. So I'll try my best to leave them linked down below, but you may need to just grab your own from their websites. And do let me know down in that comment sections if you've been a little bit slack like me and never actually bothered to update the firmware on literally any SSD until today, uh, do let me know down below. I'd love to have a chat with you guys down there. Thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.